Okay. Well, um, I uh, thank the organizers for uh, inviting me to this meeting in honor of Kobe and Sergei. Um, it's been great to see how on minimality developed under their leadership. Um, on the other hand, my talk will not be directly connected to on minimality, but I think it will be um, in, in, the, in a spirit that is in a similar spirit, uh, at least for this company. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, it's joint work with uh, my last graduate student near uh, Batwai. And um, well, to remind you that uh, in the 60s, Ix and Cochin and Yeshov independently uh, gave a good model theory for a wide class of Hanzelian valuation rings with significant applications to the Piatics, um, <coughs> Piatic number theory. And in the 1980s, uh, the NEF and I showed uh, how this model theory could be extended to um, complete uh, discrete valuation rings of characteristic zero equipped also with their natural analytic structure, right? Given such a complete discrete valuation ring R, like the Piatics, you can form, you have the tethering of R angle brackets Y1 and 2I, N of restricted power series, those that converge on R, in other words, where the coefficients go to zero. Um, and each such uh, restricted power series, capital P, can be viewed as, as an energy operation on, on R. <clears throat> and so you can simply expand R with these analytic operations. And when you do this for RSGP, you actually can solve a problem that uh, Sarah posed on periodic analytic varieties. Um, <clears throat> Well, it, it worked. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah. But there is one aspect of the classical AKE theory that, um, that was so far not extended to this analytic setting, as far as I know. There is actually one exception to that, uh, which I'll tell about later. Uh, namely, an equal characteristic zero in the classical AKE theory, you can, you can actually add a predicate for a coefficient field, yeah, by which I mean a lift of the residue field. Um, and uh, then the structure induced on this coefficient field is its usual pure field structure, um, even using parameters from the ambient uh, valued fields. <coughs> um, it does not define anything more on, the co on a coefficient field. And likewise for a binomial group, and also if you take both together. <clears throat> um, and um, <clears throat> right. So in the analytic setting, however, um, well, there was there was actually a recent partial result in this direction um, by Benjamini, Kluckers, and Novikov. I will come back to that later. Um, which they used in, in their proof of a non archimedean version of the Pilar-Wilkie counting theorem. But it's a rather special situation and, and uh, their uh, proof did not seem to generalize um, and, and not prove this induced structure aspect in a sufficiently general way, uh, sufficiently, uh, um, in a sufficiently um, general way. <clears throat> So, um, yeah, and this has to do with the fact, well, the standard approach to analytic AKE theory is simply by direct reduction to ordinary AKE theory using Weierstrass division with parameters. <clears throat> um, but we did not see how to adapt this direct reduction method to cover fully the, the induced structure aspects when you want, when you expand your um, valuation ring or the ambient valued fields. Uh, also with a coefficient field and a monomial group. <clears throat> it's of course, um, yeah, unlike in the classical AKE theory. <clears throat> so, um, so this led us to aim for the theory of analytic valuation ring 
yeah, maybe I should say there is a lot more to the analytic AKE business than I, I just said. It started with this paper of Denev and myself, but then um, uh, Leonard Lipschitz and Zachary Robinson and Ralph Kluckers have ex extended this whole uh, thing uh, in many ways to also more general um, valuation rings. Uh, but I won't go in that direction here. <clears throat> anyway, we were, um, but again, I think also what they do, I don't think you can expand with a coefficient field in a, in a, in a monomial group and still have a, a good model theory, um, <clears throat> at least not the way, not the, the method that, that they, uh, with the method that they use. <clears throat> Anyway, this led us to aim for a theory of analytic valuation links, which is a much closer analogy with ordinary valuation theory. And actually that worked. Um, so Weierstrass division is still a key tool, but it's now it plays a different role. <clears throat> and this approach um, does accommodate expansion by a coefficient field and a monomial group, much like the original AKE theory did. So you get... <clears throat> So that's what I'm going to talk about. <clears throat> um, so now, first some generalities. You can start on a very general level. You start with a commutative ring. Actually, all my rings will be commutative. I'm not going to say that later again. Um, and so let A be a, a ring with where one is not equal to zero. And suppose it's complete with respect to an ultrametric norm. Um, um, where the norm of any element is at most one and the norm of one and minus one are equal to one. <clears throat> and ultrametric simply means what I wrote there, the obvious inequ uh, inequalities. The norm of A plus B is less than equal to the maximum of the norms of A and B. And product, the norm of a product is less than equal to the norm of the product of the norms. <clears throat> okay, and that gives you the, this analog of the Tate ring, uh, restricted power series, uh, where the coefficients go to zero. And um, by an analytic A ring, we simply mean a ring which is equipped for every N and, so, uh, and, and power series in this ring uh, with an energy operation which satisfies some natural identities. For example, um, y sub j evaluated at the point little y simply gives you the j coordinate of that point, right? So little y is simply um, an n tuple y1 up to yn <coughs> from r. <coughs> and then uh, another scheme of identities is that if you have uh, uh, p, q1, qn in power series in, in this ring of power series over a, then uh, if you can always substitute Q1 up to Qn in P. Uh, you stay in that ring of power series. But then if you evaluate the result at the point little y in R to the n, you get the same as uh, plugging in Q1y dot 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 Qny in P. <clears throat> so th those are natural identities that you would want to require. <clears throat> and there are a f there is one more, uh, but I'm not really, you know, there is one that says that if you take a power, a power series in this ring in n variables, and you want to consider it as a power series and n plus one variable, it simply doesn't depend on the last variable, then the, the same thing happens for the corresponding uh, function. So uh, no, uh, well, it doesn't have to be. It's often R is A, <laughs> uh, but um, for a model theory, you need, of course, a first order ski, a first order setting. So. Uh, you need something like this. <clears throat> um, right, so for n is zero, for example, this simply uh, means that R is an A algebra. So you have a, net, a structural homomorphism from the ring A to um, R. Basically, is, it assigns to an element of A, a nullary function on R, but the nullary function of R is just an element of R. So that's how you consider R as an A algebra. And these A rings form an equational class with A itself as the initial object. Um, and uh, it's nice. I mean, it's a nice uh, equational class. You, every ideal 
of the of an A ring is also a congruence for this uh, uh, <coughs> equational for this uh, equational class. Um, you can always uh, mod out by I, and you get the unique structure of A ring on the quotients, making the canonical map a morphism. Um, <coughs> and um, but a, a little bit more work is involved in the following. Uh, if you take any integral extension, ring extension R star of, of, uh, of an A ring, then you can equip it uniquely with an A ring structure such that the inclusion map is, is also a morphism of A rings. And there you need a, a weak form already of, of Weierstrass division. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I didn't say that, but these, these rings of restricted power series do have a kind of Weierstrass division theorem associated to them, <clears throat> um, which plays a big role, of course. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so now some terminology. Uh, so this, the previous thing was in complete generality, uh, A, R doesn't have to be a valuation ring, but of course we want to apply this to valuation rings. So if, by evaluation A ring, I simply mean an A ring whose underlying ring is a valuation ring. Um, and I also will talk about valued A fields, which are basically fraction fields of, of valuation A rings. So are they themselves A rings? Hmm? Are they themselves no. A rings? No. no, typically not. Uh, typically not. So it's a little, it might be a little bit confusing to an A field isn't, isn't necessarily an A ring. But yeah, it's, one has to get used to that. Um, but um, it's a fraction field of evaluation A ring with the induced valuation. Um, or you could say it's a valued field whose valuation ring has the extra structure of an A ring. Right, and of course, the, um, this is all first order. Once you fix A and then um, these are, uh, Okay, yeah, uh, a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to introduce an actual uh, a language to talk about uh, both A rings and, and valuation A rings and, and valued A fields. So, um, yeah, so there is a superscript A to indicate that I'm talking about A rings. And uh, the language L superscript A is simply the language of A rings, right? In other words, the language of rings where you have an extra. There, for every restricted power series over A, you have a, a corresponding symbol for the uh, energy operations that it that is associated to it. And uh, but then I also, since I'm going to talk about uh, val a valued A fields, and val uh, I uh, add, add the uh, symbol for this domination relation, um, which I never know how to pronounce. And then uh, also a symbol for a restricted division, a binary function symbol for restricted division. And uh, we construe a valued A field as a structure for this language. Um, um, yeah, where, uh, where I let R be the valuation A ring of K. And well, obviously the, the ring symbols, zero, one plus minus, name the ring operations of K. And uh, every restricted power series P is interpreted as a corresponding N opera N operation on K, giving PY its usual A ring value in R if Y is a tuple from R, and otherwise you just set it equal to zero. So this is just like we talk about restricted uh, analytic functions on the reals, where if an argument is, is in absolute value bigger than one, then you set everything equal to zero. <clears throat> And then the domination, the domination relation F dominated by G is simply that the valuation of F is greater than equal to the valuation of G, um, or you can just say F is an element of GR. And the, the restricted division is, um, is important for various re reasons and it's defined uh, that way. It's F divided by G if F is dominated by G and G is not zero. And otherwise we tell, uh, D of G equals zero. Uh, so um, um, 
Right, but it's important that DFG always takes its values in R, <clears throat> right? Because as you see, if F is dominated by G and G is not zero, then F divided by G is an element of R. Uh, and also R, so K, this makes K an, uh, a structure for this language and R a substructure. Okay. Um, Right, and uh, using this language, you can talk about the, um, yeah, the, um, the extension generated by an element little z. So let k be a valued a field, let r be its valuation a ring, and let l be a valued a field extension of k. This means also uh, an extension in the sense of, of this language, l, superscript A and then the dominations symbol comma D. It's an, an extension for that language. Um, and consider an element in this extent and let capital Z be a, a, an indeterminate. Then you can take simply all the terms in that language with parameters from capital K in the variable Z and plug in for capital Z, little z. And if you then also require that tau Z is is dominated by one, you get a, uh, a valuation A ring of, um, yeah, is the valuation A ring of the valued A subfield K sub Z of L generated by Z over K. Uh, in other words, K sub Z here is the smallest valued A subfield of L that contains both K and Z. Mm. Yeah, it's sort of the, it's the analog of K parenthesis Z um, when you just have um, um, the value, if you just talk about ordinary valued fields. But uh, here, of course, you have to close off under the uh, A operations. And um, okay, yeah, the problem is that these, these terms can be rather complicated. And so this description of R sub Z and k sub z doesn't go very far mm -hmm. and in ordinary you know model theoretically oriented aka theory the analog of k sub z is just the field generated by z over k and for certain z one can describe k parenthesis z as a valued field extension of k in, in enough detail to make a difference in other words to make a difference for proving the aka theorems um, and um, that is uh, much more uh, of a problem when you talk about k sub z instead of k parenthesis z. Uh, but if you want to develop your analytic AKE theory in analogy with model theoretic, ordinary model theoretic AKE theory, you would have to have a good description of k sub z, which is better than just the way I did it there. Uh, in the first uh, um, uh, display. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to introduce assumptions so that for favorable Z, we can simplify the terms drastically and obtain a similarly good description of K sub Z. Uh, okay, uh, one assumption that we are going to introduce is just on A. Namely, you are going to assume that A is Noetherian and OA adequately complete with respect to a certain um, ideal little o of A, you know, which you can think of as uh, with the norm given in an obvious way, namely the norm of A will be then two to the minus N for A in um, the nth power of uh, that ideal and not in the n plus one power or any equivalent norm. In fact, it's not, the norm that I introduced on, that I assumed about on A is not really that important. It's the topology, the ring topology that really uh, is, the, is the important thing. <clears throat> but somehow it's convenient to have also, uh, it makes it easier to talk about things if you also have a norm. <clears throat> For example, you could have A is simply the ordinary power series ring over Z. Uh, where the ideal little o is of a is generated by the variable t. Um, right. And uh, for example, that in that example, uh, an advantage is that you can view 
both the ZPs, the ring of periodic integers, and the power series rings over FP as uh, A rings for that particular A is ZT in a natural way. Um, anyway, let R be evaluation A ring. And, and this is a technical, this looks a little bit technical, but turns out to be crucial uh, for what is coming. We say that R is viable if R is not a field. <clears throat> and, this, and the maximal ideal of R, which I indicate by little o of R, uh, is generated by some elements uh, such that the finite power of it lies in the ideal generated by little o of A. Uh, for some, um, yeah, the exponent there should be a, a positive natural number. Um, actually, we were mostly just interested in the case that E is one, right? That, that the ideal that R, the ideal of R is generated by one element and that one element is in the image of, of the maximal ideal of, sorry, not the maximal ideal of the distinguished ideal little o of A. Yeah, little o of A doesn't have to be a maximal ideal. Um, um, like in that example, it's not. <clears throat> um, but for technical reasons, it's very important that you um, come up with a condition on valuation A rings, which is preserved when you go to finite degree extensions. And this is such a condition. But note that this condition in particular implies that the maximal ideal is generated by a, a single element. So for example, uh, this, this does not allow the value, the, 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 value, the value group of your ambient field to be divisible. It, uh, the, the value group has to have a smallest positive element. Uh, so that already is, is of course a restriction, but um, anyway, uh, it turns out, well, the first thing is rather easy. Uh, if R is viable, you can, it already gives you that R is Hanzelian. <clears throat> um, so uh, in a way, that's an advantage. Hanzelianity comes for free in this case. Um, and for every finite degree extension L of the fraction field of R, the unique valuation ring of L that lies over R, <clears throat> yeah, it's unique because R is Hanzelian, um, is also viable. So uh, this is the condition and if that is an important uh, um, consequence of viability that you can pass to finite extensions. <clears throat> yeah, and, and the, the, the notarianity assumption on A um, gives for viable valuation A rings that you have a very uh, nice piecewise uniform wire stress division with respect to parameters, which of course is the kind of thing that, that the Nev and I used very much in, in our original paper, but uh, uh, but that was just for um, for a ZP itself, not not just yeah. Mm. Um, let me see. So okay, now uh, so here is a, is a is a um, typical extension result in the classical theory that you want to generalize or that you want to adapt somehow to, to the analytic situation. So let K be a valued A field whose valuation A ring is viable. Let L be an A field extension of K yeah? um, and let Z be an element of L. Now, of course, if, if Z is algebraic over K, there is no problem. K sub Z is just uh, the field generated by Z over K because of, of the, the last fact I mentioned on the previous, uh, yeah. Uh, every finite degree extension, the unique valuation ring line is, is also viable. Um, uh, um, oh, no, no, it's an earlier result. Namely, it's an integral. This unique valuation ring that lies over R is actually an integral extension of R. And in an earlier uh, thing that I, um, in an earlier reason. Oh, yeah, the fact on the, on the bottom there, if you have an integral extension, it, 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 it already comes 
with a unique a structure um, that makes uh, that works so uh, for that reason um, for that reason um, if z is algebraic over k then k sub z is just k parenthesis c but um, another situation you have to deal with is suppose you have a sequence um, in k indexed by uh, let's say an or an, an infinite an, um, a limit ordinal rho uh, the indices rho range over the ordinals less than a limit ordinal then uh, it makes sense to talk about such a sequence pseudo convergence to pseudo converging to z and of transcendental type over k basically means that um, it cannot have a pseudo limit in an algebraic extension right uh, and then it's classical that um, the field generated by z over k is an immediate extension of k and in, in a way it's uniquely determined by this pseudo uh, converging sequence if you take another pseudo limit uh, of the same sequence then let's say z prime then kz and kz prime are isomorphic over k by an isomorphism that sends z to z prime so it would be nice if you could also uh, prove a similar thing for k sub z and uh, fortunately that is true um, so the answer um, <clears throat> is on the bottom k sub z is indeed an immediate extension of capital k but uh, how to get there is as follows and you see it's a little bit more work than in the in the um, <coughs> classical case <coughs> although it uses in fact in, in some sense it uses heavily the classical case um, yeah um, we can of course arrange that the zeros are all dominated by one otherwise you just replace the zero by the reciprocals and then uh, the difference between z and zero will you can write as a as something in k t rho times u rho where u rho is in this extension k uh, generated by z this is the ordinary field extension generated by z and u rho is um, then um, asymptotically um, equivalent has the same valuation as, as one yeah um, right it's a unit in the valuation ring of kz um, okay so for each row you can form the a ring generated by u rho over r right and then you can show that from some index on uh, if rho is and sigma are uh, if rho is less than sigma and both of them are bigger than rho zero then r uh, angle bracket u rho is contained in r angle bracket u sigma um, so you get an increasing sequence of of uh, of a rings none of these a rings themselves is is a valuation ring but if you take that union you can show that it is a valuation ring and that is r sub z so this gives a rather explicit description of r sub z and then and one can then show that k sub z is is indeed an immediate extension of k so it is uh, just what we want <clears throat> if you want to have an analog with with ordinary uh, ake theory um, and it's also unique up to uh, in the same way as in a classical ake theory namely if you have an other valued a field extension l prime of k and uh, you all and your the same sequence zero through the converges to an element in this other extension then the two a ring a rings r sub z and r sub z prime let's say uh, over r uh, well there's a unique a ring isomorphism between them um, sending z to z z to z prime that's a, a typo the second c should be of course z prime and and of course that means that it extends also to a, a valued a field isomorphism between kz and kz prime <clears throat> right um right okay now so this leads in the usual way for example to a koplansky type embedding theorem and uniqueness 
result for k of a q characteristic zero. Um, any such k, yeah, k is still an, uh, a valued a field um, with a, a viable valuation a ring. Um, any such k has a spherically complete immediate valued a field extensions, a field extension. Um, and any two such extensions are isomorphic over K. And again, one can prove this also for finitely ramified of Pick's characteristic, um, right? Because it's really the, the fact on the top that, that, that uh, you can use in the same way as, as in the ordinary Kaplansky type uniqueness theorem. <clears throat> okay, uh, yeah. Feel free to, to interrupt or ask questions. Yeah, now in the classical AKE theory, uh, the immediate extensions, that is one uh, important thing to understand. And then there are two other kinds of transcendental extensions that you really have to understand, namely, uh, but they um, are a bit easier. They are considered to be a little bit easier to handle than, than immediate extensions. And one kind of extension is where uh, Z is dominated by one. So Z is in the valuation ring of the extension. And the residue class of Z uh, is transcendental over the residue field of K, right? So this is the case where the value group remains the same, but the residue field extends as much as you, uh, extends uh, in a transcendental way. So that is one kind of extension. And the other kind of extension is, is sort of the opposite. That's where the residue field remains the same and the value group extends uh, as much as, as, as possible. Uh, so that's the case where for every D greater than equal to one, D times the valuation of Z is not in capital gamma, by which I mean the value group of, of the base field K. Yeah. Um, so it turns out, uh, so, Anyway, these, these uh, extensions are um, well understood, of course, in the classical theory. Um, and um, uh, for your, and together with immediate extensions, um, you can sort of uh, um, control everything else. <clears throat> but in our analytic AKE theory, it turns out that these kinds of extensions are much, are much harder and, um, to deal with and they gave us a lot of trouble. Um, nevertheless, we managed to overcome the trouble and, um, and this is, um, so let K again be, uh, K is always an, um, a valued A field whose valuation A ring is viable. Um, and L is an A valued A field extension. L does not have to be, by the way, uh, its valuation ring does not have to be viable for this for this fact that I state here. <clears throat> um, now the central fact is that the, one can show that the quantifier free type of Z over K in the valued fields, uh, in the ordinary valued field setting, right? Where you have the ring language of rings together with a symbol for the dominance relation, that the quantifier free type of Z over K completely determines the quantifier free type in this extended language where you also have uh, the A ring operations and the div restricted division. <laughs> um, and determines completely means that if you have two such Z's, right? Maybe in different extensions and they have the same quantifier free type in the uh, valued field language, then they also have the same quantifier free type in this extended language over K, <laughs> right. And so this central fact is not so easy to, to, to prove, but uh, it it's, can be done. Um, and then once you have that, then you can prove the analogs of the two classical facts about uh, these particular kinds of extensions that I mentioned before. Um, you still, it still takes a bit of work to do that actually, but um, <clears throat> anyway, that's, there are the statements. If capital, if little z is dominated by one and the residue class of z is transcendental over the residue field of capital K, then k sub z is, is an immediate, ah, yeah, then k sub z is an immediate extension of 
of the fields generated by z over k, right? So it's it's not too far off from kz in that sense. Uh, and but again, k sub z is unique up to isomorphism over k. By which, of course, I mean that if you have another z in some other extension with the same conditions, then k k sub z and the and k of the others k sub the other z are isomorphic over k by an isomorphism that sends z to the other z. Um, and the isomorphism are, of course, isomorphism in this extended for this extended language. <laughs> right. And likewise for the uh, second um, kind of extensions. But there you need something more. You need one. We can only prove that if, if the, val the value group gamma of k is a z group and the valuation you see, for the first kind of extension, I didn't need to assume that the valuation A ring of L is viable, but for the second kind of extension, we, we need that also. Um, the valuation ring of A of L has to be also viable, but that's for our applications, ultimately for our AKE, analytic AKE theory, that's fine. <laughs> um, so there you have the same kind of isomorphism and Again, k sub z being an immediate extension of k parenthesis z. <clears throat> uh, maybe I'm going too fast. Uh, wait, what, what, what's, how much time do I have? Uh, I go, hmm? You have two minutes. Oh, and this is slide 10 out of 17. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, then I'm okay. <laughs> okay, actually, this is this this raises a question which uh, uh, and haven't thought about this very much, but but it might be interesting to find out if for any z in any extension L, um, whether that's always an immediate extension of k, the field generated by z over k, um, and if it helps you. I'm happy if you assume that K has equi-characteristic zero, that gamma is a Z group, and that the valuation A ring of L is, is also viable. Uh, so, uh, <clears throat> right, so these extension results then allow us to proceed much as in the classical model theoretic proofs of uh, the uh, x quotient yes of theorems. Um, um, and but the, the 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 nice thing is that now you can also add a coefficient field and a value and a, and a monomial group, which in the older approach by direct reduction um, to the to ordinary AKE theory using Weierstrass division we could not do. <clears throat> uh, so um, so let's assume then that our value. So I'm only going to state the results in this extended setting where you also have a coefficient field and a value and a monomial group, because there the results seem to be, what we get seem to be new, at least, okay, as far as I know. So um, I assume our valued field, A field K, uh, where I assume that, that its valuation A ring is viable, has equicharacteristic zero, um, Gamma is a Z group. Excuse me. The monomial group is a is a lifting of the of the value group, so it maps bijectively onto the onto the value group. That's right. And likewise, the coefficient field is a maps isomorphically onto the residue field <laughs> uh, by the usual canonical map. Right. Uh, so you have uh, C is a coefficient field of capital K and G is a monomial group of K. And then you can talk about this expansion of K uh, where you add the predicates for C and G. And it, but you should keep in mind that this is a one sorted structure still, right? Because uh, if you, it's not the, the, C is not the residue field, but it's a coefficient field. So it sits inside K itself and likewise with G. Um, and then, you get the following um, typical AKE type results, namely that uh, if K C G is a substructure of K prime C prime G prime, and where K prime C prime G prime satisfies the same condition that we imposed on K C G, 
n if c is an, uh, an elementary substructure of c prime and now unfortunately i have to use uh, the symbol for domination that is the same symbol as for elementary substructure i hope this is not confusing G with the dominance relation, that is the ordered group G, so to say, is this elementary substructure of G prime with its its dominance relation. Then the first substructure, the first structure is an elementary substructure of the second structure, right? So, uh, and now uh, the second result is this, um, uh, let's say, um, induced structure result. Uh, if you have any subset of C to the M cross D to the N, which of course you now view as a subset of K to the power M plus N, and it's definable in this expansion, then it's a finite union of rectangles, P cross Q, where P is, uh, is a subset of C to the M definable in the field C, right? Only in no, no external parameters, just in the field C, and no extra structure on C, just the field structure. And Q is likewise definable in the ordered group G. And in particular, this means that they are stably embedded. And uh, yeah, so the, way, the, re the reason to emphasize this is that, is that this does not seem to follow from the earlier approach uh, using uh, direct uh, wire stress reduction. <clears throat> okay, so now, Ah, yeah, I want to mention one application of this uh, thing. Uh, namely, there is a, a paper by uh, uh, Janke and uh, Simon, with, where they gave a test for an expansion of a reasonably behaved Henselian valued field to have NIP. Um, <clears throat> and if you apply that criterion um, in combination with the above induced structure result, you can, you, you, you obtain the following implication, namely that if the field C has NIP, then this one sorted expansion of K, expansion by the coefficient field and, and the value and the monomial group has also NIP, right? Yeah, G doesn't really play a role here for NIP because it aut automatically has NIP, right? An ordered group, Abelian group has NIP by, by earlier work of uh, Kurevich and Schmidt, I believe. Um, right, now, um, oh, did I mention Benjamini Klukas Novikov already? I should have, uh, maybe. Hmm? Oh, okay, right. Um, yes, so there was an earlier result by, and in fact, this, this stimulated us to think about this. There is this paper by Benjamini Klukas and Novikov that's going to or maybe has already appeared in the um, Duke Mathematical Duke Journal. Um, what is that result and how does it fit into, uh, into uh, uh, what we did? <clears throat> so they, for in their situation, capital A is just the power series uh, in one variable over C and little o is simply the maximum ideal. And they consider the three sorted structure script M where the three sorts are, well, the valued A field CT, right? Um, uh, this natural A field structure. Uh, and then the, the residue field, which is the, the field of complex numbers, and the order to be in group Z, which is the value group. So it's really a three sorted structure here. Um, each, but each of the three components is a, can you, is a one sorted structure. And then you have also two functions that relate the different sorts, namely the natural valuation from the first sort to the last sort, and then the angular component map. Um, yeah, they call it angular component map, which simply assigns to each Laurent series the leading coefficient. Now, one shouldn't confuse this three sorted M with the one sorted um, that we consider. Uh, for us, the thing would be uh, to consider would be the field of Laurent series with C as a coefficient field and the monomial group T to the Z, right? Um, and in a way, the, the, 
this one sort of thing is a bit richer, namely that in M, when you view C as a subset of, of the main sort, it will not be definable in M. And likewise, the monomial group will not be definable. Um, actually, that's based on the, let's say, the ordinary uh, analytic AKE theory uh, that they are not definable. <clears throat> right. And so what is, uh, yeah, now the situation that they consider, um, I mean, uh, is the following. For a, an integer d greater than to one, they look at the polynomials of degree less than d uh, in t over c. And uh, of course you can view this as a subset of the field of Laurent series, um, c brackets t less than d is a subset of ct. Um, but of course, there is a natural identification of this set of polynomials with c to the power d by, namely, if you have a polynomial um, a sub zero plus a sub one t plus a sub d minus one t to the d minus one, you simply identify it with the vector of coefficients a sub zero up to a sub d minus one. Yeah? And now take a, set of n-tuples of Laurent series, capital P, a set of um, n-tuples of Laurent series and define PD to be P intersected with, you just look at the, the, the elements in P where the components are all polynomials, happen to be polynomials in T of less of degree less than D, right? So under the identification of CT less than D with C to the D, this becomes a subset of C to the power DM. Right, and then they prove the following about it. Um, if P happens to be definable in M, in this three sort of structure, then for every D greater to one, this set PD as a subset of C to the power DM is a constructible subset of the space C to the dn when you equip it with the Zariski topology, right? Constructible in this topology simply means it's a Boolean combination of open sets. Um, <clears throat> no way. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, of course, we know that constructible is also the same as uh, by quantifying combination as definable in the field C, <clears throat> but that's how they state it. Um, now, you, you, you might think that, should, that this might follow from the older analytic AKE business, um, which tells us that every subset of C to the power N, which is definable in M, um, <coughs> is definable already in the field C. But you see there, you consider C as the residue field. Um, so when you uh, talk about subsets of C to the N there, I really have in mind C as the residue viewed as the residue field of in this three sorted structure. And then um, the problem is that you might think that that should be enough to give the BCN theorem, but it does, if you think about it, it doesn't. The, the BCN theorem, although it's stated about this three sorted structure, it does not follow from the analytic AKE theorem, um, AKE result from the older uh, theory, so to say. <clears throat> Um, and in fact, they have to do extra work. They have to do a fair amount of extra work. They use the a known quantifier elimination result about analytic AKE plus a rather tricky induction on terms. Um, right. And so this was, so this, this stimulated us to, to really uh, try to get this in, in, a, in, a, in a more less ad hoc way, so to say. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so clearly our induced structure result does in, in, include the BCN theorem um, in an obvious way. Um, so, um, right. Um, yeah, so now a, a little bit more about this, uh, what I call the, the central fact. Um, yeah, uh, the, if you go back to the central fact that I mentioned uh, earlier, The central fact, quantifier free type of, of an element over K determines completely the quantifier free type in this extended language. 
then uh, that is where we really had to work to get that. And originally we thought we should be able to get this rather cheaply from, um, from something that, um, there was a paper that I wrote uh, in the 99 by, uh, uh, with me, yeah, by, by me and, and Deirdre and, and, and Dougald on periodic subanalytic sets. And it roughly says that the function on R defined by one variable term, um, and in that paper, A and K were very special, uh, behaves piecewise like a rational function over K, meaning on the pieces, the, the, the term has the same zeros as, as, a, as a certain rational function and also the same valuation at every point, roughly speaking. <clears throat> and the pieces are very nice, uh, quantifiably definable in the language of ordinary valued fields. Uh, unfortunately, when we went through the, that paper again, we found that there was an error in a key lemma. Um, and much of our effort was to get around it. <clears throat> so we managed to prove a weaker version by allowing the rational functions to be defined over a finite degree extension of K. And we really had to go to finite degree extension where the pieces again on which the rational functions behave similarly as the one variable term, um, again, are quantifiably definable, but now, of course, quantifiably definable in this extension. <clears throat> um, in, the, in the language of valued fields, so without the extra uh, symbols. <clears throat> so that is why viability became, became relevant, and it turned out to be enough to prove this, uh, this central fact. Um, okay. Yeah, well, fortunately, um, because there was this error uh, and that lemma, we really needed uh, every, a lot depended on that lemma. Also, in my in my paper of Deirdre and Dougald, uh, for our periodic purpose, we needed that lemma only for the case of a finite residue field, and there one can actually prove the original lemma. But again, it takes about two pages of extra work. So, uh, so the results in that paper are not affected fortunately, because, uh, well, that would have been the worst mistake in my, in my <laughs> ever made in, by me at least, in a paper, I think. Hmm? Yeah, yeah, P yeah, well, that's, yeah, exactly, right. Um, yes, yeah, so uh, it has a happy ending, I hope, I, I think. Uh, all right, here are some references of papers that I, uh, refer to the, the paper by Benjamin Klokov Novikov with this point counting and Wilkins conjecture for non Archimedean Trafian and interior functions, and the uh, paper that, that I mentioned by uh, Deirdre Dougald and me, and then this Janke Simon paper. Okay, um, that is it.